when the world unites and the governments unite and the people unite, we will have no more conflict because it will be simulated conflict. We won't have the physical conflict because it will all be simulated like gaming systems and computer, even YouTube, this stuff is simulated conflict. It's real, but it's electronic. There's no fear of, if this was a bar room and all these people on YouTube were in a bar, or even in a room without alcohol, there's much more chance that somebody would get pushed. Here now, it's all simulated conflict and we're working through our issues from a sense of safety. I just had a flash of someone going crazy and coming with guns, killing someone else on YouTube. That's my fear and insecurity, but I won't let it be in my mind and be afraid to talk about it, because the only way to unlock the lock is to accept that there's a lock there. It's safe. This is a safe way to be. It's people being open from their place. This is a good way to unify. It's, it's speeding up the simulated conflict resolution system. Video games do that too. Being able to put yourself into a situation. I would lead people in a time of conflict by being with the people. Keep people alive. Keep the people around me alive. I was playing this game called Mount and Blade last night, and as combat simulations go, it's the best medieval combat system I've ever experienced, uh, to the point where I feel like I'm in the game, and I communicate in my mind to these characters around me. The combat is so fluid, and it's on horseback, and when I'm out of the game, when I'm like distracted by something around me, the people in the game will be dying. My, my friends in the game, you hire people in the game and then you go and you have, there's conflict. And it's like medieval times, you get all these different blades and weapons and you can use a bow and arrow. You ride a horse and the physics are so realistic of the game. The, the movement is so fluid, very, as if, if you were there, that's the kind of slowing and speeding and turning and running it would be. You can feel the weight of the armor that the character puts on in their movement. It's well simulated, and I, if, if I'm out of it, if I'm distracted, the, the people in my party will start to die, will we'll be get, we'll get killed, like things will get chaotic. If I'm focused and in it and comfortable and relaxed, it's fluid. I, I move through it easily and, and cut and destroy the enemy, essentially, with keeping my, my party alive and people survive, and it's, it's reminiscent of this film 300, like I think we watch these films to put ourselves in the place of people at that time, when combat and war was in the face of, personal, it wasn't like a, a, a simulated combat, like right now it's almost like it's simulated combat because it's so far away, you don't get up, you don't see it. There's not the, the moving around the person to person that there has been throughout time. And that moving around people we simulate with film and, and these video games. I mean, 300, if you haven't seen this film, you check it out. Because it's, it's a brilliant documentation of this Spartan culture in like the year... I don't know, it was when they were the Greeks were, it was before they had merged with the Greeks when the Persian Empire was invading, like, maybe in the B.C. This, the reason I say things like, I would be a leader, is because I watch this film and I see this guy, this, this king, Leonidas, really leading people. And I think the, the way he did it was by engaging his ego, accepting that he was a leader and keeping people alive. And he spent his life doing that. And he did. 
that inspires me greatly. It's, it's, but it's like, we really, we only as a culture need leaders when we're at combat. When there's con, when there's like war, then people step up as great leaders and keep people alive. When we're not at war, we don't really feel the need for a leader because we're all surviving. We can be our own leader at this point. So, I'm, t I'm torn between are we at war or are we not at war? I don't feel like I'm at war during my day, so I start to forget that the, the stakes are raised. But we're at war. Bush even said this, this denial that we're at war is costing people. He, he said it in regards to the Democrats denying that there's war and trying to just get the troops back and something. But really, denying that we're at war right now is not helping us. We are at war, literally at war. The country is literally declared war. And I think during war, people should step up to keep the people alive. And this is a new way. This is a psychological thing. We're not literally on the battlefield right now with blades in our hands. We're just talking and thinking our way through it because it's a simulated war. It seems like it's all about <coughs> numbers and it's far away. It's not on our border. In the past, if there's a war, it's because the border was either invaded or troops were sent over the border, but just directly over the border, maybe across some water. And then that would seem simulated. I think that's, the, well, a country that invades, Bush said that the only way to keep the country safe is to remain on the offense. I don't agree. I think that he has done something great in the grand scheme of things, horrible for the moment because it's warfare, but great in that after this happens, after this war ends, the rest of the world will have sympathy for the United States, having been under this kind of dictator-esque rule. Literally, I feel like I'm being ruled by the government. And the whole point of democracy is that we're not ruled, but that we are the government. And the government is essentially our loud, our, our megaphone. But I feel like we're being a, somewhat oppressed and ruled. That's old, old school, man. That's like a king. A king would rule and dictate and send and do. This government is supposed to be much more representative of its people. I suppose this government, just by allowing us to have this kind of technology and spread our own voice, is giving us the potential to be the one in charge. George Bush's boss is me, is you. The American citizenship is the is the boss we are all leaders for those around us to keep the people around us alive and not just for the short term not just grab the meat look around and see what's around that meat before you run up and grab it see the whole situation and that way we can sustain the human race for a long time, well after the earth is destroyed or consumed by the sun. I believe that the sun is going to expand and eventually consume the earth and Mars, but we will, we will be existing on many planets and in space at that point. We can survive to that point if we focus on the big picture. Not just survival in the moment, not just that, not just get the food, not just that, but the big picture of all things. We can, we can look beyond right now. But we can do that by saying that what will be is happening now. We are building a space program. It is, ex it is ex expediting. That's hard to do. I feel you. I feel some people's discomfort when I say that in myself. We can. 
maybe that's the best way to do it. We can build a space program right now. It's happening. I did it, I kind of did it again. I said, it's happening. So to say that it's happening, that kind of rubs people. And sometimes people don't mind it. They're like, yeah, yeah, it's happening. And sometimes people are like, who are you to say that it's happening? To whatever it is. I want a space program. I think every human takes a shit 